What's going on, my boys? YT Dan back again with a brand new podcast episode. I'm on my way to take my place at the top as king. I'm about to go for KOG so I can make a spicy video for you boys and end out February right. But I think that it's pretty cool. Um, I'm doing this podcast thing. It's giving me an opportunity to reach out to people that I wouldn't normally be able to reach out. And today we have Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything on the channel for this podcast. We talk about lots of stuff. I met Dylan at that third anniversary event, and man, we kind of hit it off. We are definitely fast friends. We like, man, I really enjoy talking to this guy. So, I mean, you guys should really enjoy this conversation. We talk about the anime. We talk about the train car game. We talk about YouTube. We talk about life. We talk about my Valentine. <laughs> we talk about a whole lot of stuff. So you guys should really enjoy this. This one is longer than usual. I just want to see how you guys um, like a longer form stream. Um, I'm getting better at putting these things together. So I hope that you guys will enjoy it. And hey, thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, keep it. Dang. Yeah, it's pretty crazy how fast technology has moved. It's honestly terrifying. Yeah, I mean, straight up, honestly, it's a miracle. I'm talking to you on Discord right now. I hate Discord. The user interface is trash. I'm just saying, I know you guys love Discord out there, but user interface is absolute trash. It's a I, mess. I'm, not a, uh, I'm not a big <laughs> fan of, of Discord. It's too overwhelming for me more yeah, than anything else. It's, it's a bunch, like, and honestly, if you are any one of and I don't even mean like a celebrity or a YouTuber or anything. If you're anything of note, your Discord is probably going to be on fire with red notifications, a bunch yep. of things that you have to give some attention to. And it does drive me insane. Like, I mean, I started my Discord two years ago and Watt was telling me that he like joined it and he like uh, met a lot of other uh, Duel Links YouTubers there. But it was like I was just kind of non-existent there because every time I would go there, it's like millions of questions and everything else. Well, not millions, but tens of twenties of questions. And it was just right. a lot. <laughs> no, no, I get it, dude. When I had my uh, public discord back a few years ago, it was the most stressful thing of my life. Like now my discord is only for uh, channel members or patrons. Even if you're just a patron for a month, you have access to my discord really forever. Oh, okay. um, but back. Back when it was public, the, the chaos, the amount of trolls that would come in, and then you'd have to, like, you know, intervene in situations, and if you appointed certain mods, if those mods went rogue, it was like, it was just, dude, it was just a nightmare. Yeah. Situa yeah, D Discord, I have a horrible <laughs> relationship with Discord. It was the same thing on mine, too, and I remember, so I don't remember the details of what happened. But I remember there was like this feud between like a mod and since in a regular guy and yep. and then a the mod got into it with some other stuff and they kept asking and he kept asking me what do you want to do and I'm like I I'm like what do whatever like <laughs> I'm like this I'm like I am like hyper stressed out right now in between this the videos regular life like at this point I was like Discord can just die in a fire like literally yeah. like I yeah. would not <laughs> I I, en I ended up what I ended up doing to my public discord is i basically let it die in a fire i literally freezed every single channel so no one could text so the history of all the conversations were there but no one could write in any of the channels on my discord and it's still there as like like a museum observatory where people can come and look and say oh this was dylan's discord no one's written in here since 2017 but you know that's nice it's a nice memorabilia oh so channel, it's but, dead and you made a new one Oh yeah, like the one I have now is just for patrons or channel members. Oh, you didn't convert the old one. You just, you know, froze no, the other one and opened no, it. I didn't convert the old one. I, I was off Discord for a good year. Because um, the other thing is, I created Discord when I first started with Discord. I went in with two other people, and one is a girl who I still am friends with. I consider her a, a, a pretty good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. um, and another per another one that I made the Discord with is someone that I didn't really know that well looking back at it. Yeah. And my relationship with him is horrible. Like, we... <laughs> I mean, I, I know he really is not like me, and that really just kind of blew up on Discord. And as you said earlier, it's like, you know, we're so stressed... We're, we're so stressed with life and with YouTube in general... Discord is just such a burden, man. I, I yeah. It's nice to see it bring people together, which I'm sure you've seen that on your server as well. And that's the best thing that Discord has has done for my community. It's brought people together. But um, in terms of running it, 
Oh man, it's just uh, it's it's a nightmare. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's like, I mean, it, real talk is a full time job, and the people, well, not even just the people on Discord, the people on YouTube the people on Twitch, the people who decides to offer up their time and patience and energy as a sacrifice to these random internet so-and-sos and moderate the goddamn chat. Those guys are the true saints. Like all those yeah. guys need the shrines. They need monuments erected in their name. Like truly <laughs> those guys are like the real MVPs because sometimes it's like, you know, when stuff gets really bananas, sometimes those guys really step up and you're like, man, this guy really like did everything. And I like, I don't even know who he really is. Actually, he's literally just an anonymous hero. Yeah, yeah, and that's the thing. There are people who, like, step up and do so much for your channel or your server, and a lot of them I've, I've taken the time and, and gotten to know, but a lot of them still are, like, anonymous heroes, as you say, and the thing that I find so fascinating and so kind of scary, too, with YouTube and the Internet and everything, especially talking to users, is if you have a user, DuelLinksFan05, he could be mm -hmm. around, he could be on your Twitter, he could be on your Discord, he could be around everywhere, and like he's a really awesome dude. There could be a point in your life where he just disappears from the internet, and you will never hear from him or her again, and yeah. they are just gone forever. And that's happened to people that like I've been friends with and I've talked to in YouTube, and it's it's terrifying to think that like even though we're like friendly with a lot of people and close with a lot of people, that's the job of being a content creator. At the end of the day. We're all strangers, right? Yeah. I mean, and it's kind of weird, too, when you think about it, too. Like, we're all strangers, but then we have these bonds that we're, like, connecting with each other. On our, and I would honestly say it's, like, it's on a different kind of level. It's, it's not on the level of, like, man, we're just friends and this is a hobby thing. This feels like a weird new thing because it's, like, you're forming these types of relationships. And most of the time it's around, like something that you're passionate in so it puts these people in this very weird category in your brain like you know you got the people you love you got your family and then you got these people who you enjoy Yu-Gi-Oh with who is who have this insane connection with you who just understand you on a different level that other people just don't get and you don't even see these people's faces it's just really strange yeah, yeah, and my favorite is when people will have like a different username on like five different sites. So <laughs> yeah. they'll have a different they'll have a different YouTube username, they'll have a different Discord username, and they'll have a different Twitter username. And you're trying to balance <laughs> between yeah. all these different usernames, and you think it's like five different people, yet it's one person. Uh, yeah, the internet is just weird when you really think about it. It, it does a lot of amazing things, but it's also just everything you just said was spot on. It's just it's a weird place, man. Yeah, I mean, it, it is crazy, but, you know, I'm kind of enjoying the ride. Like, I didn't really, I never envisioned anything like this when I was, like, younger. When I was younger, I always used to think, like, man, it sure would be nice to, like, one day, like, duel people from all around the world. But I was like, but uh, that's a far-off dream, and I don't think I'll be winning any, chance, any trips to world anytime soon. So I just kind of enjoyed my life and stuff and kept playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And then, like, one day, Duel Links dropped, and I was like, man, this is, like, really, like, like this is it. Like, this is exactly what I was thinking about back in the day. I Like, outside of a Duel Disc, like, this is almost everything that I've actually wanted. Um, so it, it's been it's been absolutely insane. It's been, it's been incredible, actually. Yeah, no, I, I completely feel that. And, like, with me, it's, uh, you know, it's you with Duel Links. It's me with the anime. Like, I remember... Uh, it's just crazy to think. I mean, we've both, um, you know, I feel like everyone who has a, even if you only have like five or 10,000 subscribers, like to me, that's still a very big amount. Like oh, yeah. I know you're, you're over 30, I'm over 60. And it's like, it's just crazy to think that like before you started doing anything, you would have never thought, at least I feel this way. I would have never thought I would have reached the amount of subscribers and views and even friendships that I've reached through doing YouTube. Like, you just never believe it. You never think that it's possible or obtainable. And, yeah, looking back on it, it really is uh, incredible. And, like, obviously, you with Duel Links, me with the anime. I remember in 2015, 2016, no one was talking about the anime on YouTube. 
And I was which like, is, I really which think is bo- you know, crazy to even think yeah, about. Yeah, looking back at it now, now, but think about all the big corporations that have gotten involved. All your your watch mojos now they're all making videos on it. Crunchyroll yeah. threw their hat into the ring with a timeline video because they yeah. they now realize that Yu Gi Oh has a massive audience. It's something I realized you know, three four years before they did. Um, but of course. You know, channels like Watch Mojo, they can upload anything they want and it's going to yeah. get an insane amount of views. Um, even Jay Wits, who is a guy who does all Pokemon content, he's dipped his hat into the Yu Gi Oh ring recently. Yeah. Uh, so, like, it's such a big IP and a big market, and so many people do enjoy talking about the anime and watching the anime. And yeah, it's amazing to me that five years ago there was no more, there was no content regarding it at all. Uh, so, I'm thankful that I kind of was one of the first to at least start making content consistently on just the anime. And, yeah, to think that I've met so many people and talked about the shows to so many different people, I mean, it, it truly is incredible. Yeah, so, like, even from that perspective, like, from the anime side, um, like, just just give me an idea of kind of what that community is like. Because, like, for example, uh, I, w- I can really speak to the Duel Links community, and I can I guess I can speak to TC community tcg community very passively but i i kind of feel like outside of the competitiveness you know where folks are just kind of either a hundred percent all in and they just want to know what the top deck is so that they can play it and play against it etc you have these other folks who are just kind of i don't know just kind of it seems like the i guess the best way to describe it is just in love with the game they just want to know anything right. and everything right. Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links or TCG or whatever. So, like, how are the anime uh, community? Like, what is that like? <laughs> oh, boy. Well, you got an hour of your time. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, the anime community, it's such a, um, you know, even though it's Yu-Gi-Oh!, right, it's still such a foreign concept that a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! Tubers don't really understand. Um, rightfully so, because even though it is uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Thumbnail right there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Yugi tubers don't understand the anime community. I like that. <laughs> oh man. Oh boy. Yeah. Quote me on that. Um, no, I, I, <laughs> I will say, man, there are a lot of incredible people in the anime community. There are. You have your. There's so many different groups. You have your people who watch the. You have your cosplayers, right? People who watch the anime and they want to cosplay the anime. I feel like. There's a good amount of cosplayers who don't even necessarily watch the show. They just watch the character designs so that they can cosplay, as I think a a few cosplayers are. And then, of course, I'm friends with two cosplayers, Nina and Christina. Huge shout-out to them. They're incredible cosplayers. Hmm. They watch the shows. You have your uh, Gen 1-er fans, as the Pokemon community knows very well, where (laughs) Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Monsters was the best. It all went to trash after Duel Monsters. Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Boomers. Yeah, Yugi Boomers. That's I love <laughs> Yugi that Boomers. That's, I like that's great. That. Now, Yugi now you have certain variations of them because a few of them will say, "No, GX was pretty good too," and then it went to trash. Ah, and then the so final Yugi pack Zoomers. says, "Yugi Zoomers." <laughs> 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 and then you have a few that also say, Five Ds was great." The rest went to trash. Most of those people have never seen past Duel Monsters. They just assume that the shows are horrible. Oh, yeah. um, but I will say, there's a lot of amazing people who are just very easygoing. You have your people who are very, you know, I want the show to be this way. If the show is not done this way, then the show sucks and everything sucks. Your opinion <laughs> sucks. And then you have the fringe fans. And there there are more fringe fans than I would like to admit. And the fringe like fans Like Sammy Classic Sonic fans, you mean? Like like those kind of people? <sighs> I, I, I don't know, maybe, but the fringe fans that I'm referring to are people that will make death threats. I've I've been sent death threats before, and people have... I'll, I'll never forget it. It was actually at the end of Arc 5. I think death the Arc threats? 5 fringe... Death threats, man, over the Yu-Gi-Oh! For, anime. For I mean, what? What could you possibly have said? So I was critical of the way that Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 came to an end. Oh. I was like, wow, I really did not like how this show came to an end. I've made a few videos on it, you know, just my, my overall thoughts on Arc 5. Yeah. And the these these group of about five, six, seven insane fangirls on Twitter tweeted not at me but they subtweeted me and people screenshotted it and dm'd it to me which first of all don't do that i i'd I'd rather stay ignorant on it to be completely honest but (laughs) you know i I don't want to hear what people that have me blocked on twitter are saying i i could care less 
Um, and Wait, so they, they blocked tweeted. You? Okay, so you're telling they me they blocked me and then they said group of yes, people like, <laughs> who blocked you <laughs> and talked shit and sent death threats because they didn't like how the end of Arc Five. No, happened. no, because I didn't like it. They love. Oh, because you didn't Arc like Five it. Five oh, okay. is a is a literary and media masterpiece to them, and so because I didn't wow. like it, I was spreading hate and and slander, um, and so. I'll never forget one of the most creative tweets I ever saw. <laughs> Shin Yoshida is the writer of Zexel and Vrains, and obviously he did not partake in the writing of Arc 5. And okay. I've, I've praised Shin Yoshida's writing. I think he was one of the best writers that, um, that Yu-Gi-Oh! had, even though his writing with girl characters was you know, something to be desired, but that's a whole other story. Uh, and, and one of the most creative tweets was like, can that, can that Yu-Gi-Oh! everything guy just end his life already and we can bury him in the same casket as Shin Yoshida? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? What? I, I, what? I, I shit you not, dude. I shit you not. Someone tweeted oh they wanted me to kill myself. And I know exactly who it is. It's actually it's someone who makes AMVs on YouTube. I'm not gonna I've seen Wait. I've seen people talk about her before. Wait, there is a very are dark making side. AMVs in twenty twenty. <laughs> <laughs> No! Well, this was. I guess I make Duel Links AMVs kind of. This was so, about okay, three I years guess. ago. I, there, there's oh, some people who make okay. good AMVs. Uh, I didn't think they gonna... do that anymore. I thought I thought no, that well, stopped because of you know copyright uh, everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, copyright. Yeah, I know that. But um, that was probably the most creative. So there is really a fringe group of every show where if you say something negative, the fangirls and the fanboys just nail you for it to the point where. You're a horrible human being. Yeah. They tried. They they tried to make me out to be a bad. They tried to claim that I was bullying one of them, which is insane. I would never do that. You bully um, me. <laughs> yeah. I mean. I mean. I mean. Come on. I'm a. I, I would. Yeah. It was just such a. You, what, what did you What did you do? Did you Did you tell them that MST negated or something? Like what did no, you do? No. No. I I, 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 told you, him, I told him. I told him. Pot agreed. Drew Till. <laughs> oh. No. What I. <laughs> No, I'll, I'll tell you what I did. This was back in my early days. It was early 2017. No. I screenshotted their tweets and I posted oh. them on my Twitter. And I said, really wish people didn't say this shit about me behind my back. You know, if you have an issue with me, direct it to me. And I also pointed out why the tweets were infactual because they were trying to claim I said things that I never said. And I didn't block out their usernames. Probably a mistake on my part. I ended up deleting the tweets because I, I, I felt bad about it. Uh, yeah. My thought process going into it is, well, you know, if you tweet it, you put it in a public domain. Who cares if I, you know, don't blur yeah, out I mean, your Twitter yeah, name it's, or whatever. It's, it's a retweet, basically, you know? Basically, yeah, it was a quote tweet. Yeah. yeah right. uh, except it was a pick stitch. It was a little more creative than that. And so, <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, there is a um, – it's a very small portion, but there is an insane – fringe portion of the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime fandom that a lot of people who just play the TCG would not realize is there. But uh it wow. can be it can be scary traversing that. It can be intimidating for new people who I think want to get into content creation. Um I've seen in my now I feel like a an old man. I've seen back in my day, <laughs> you know, there there have been so many so many Yu-Gi tubers who have started in anime and one of the um the biggest that I can remember was Ant Coates. I you that name might sound familiar to a few of people. She mm, used to, uh, yeah, she used to do anime content, and she had a video that actually blew up. I think it had like two hundred thousand views. Very sweet girl, and the amount of, and maybe it was because she was a girl. I, I really don't know. Um, and I, I'd like to think that the Yu-Gi-Oh community is a little better than that, but I, I really don't know what the other reason might have been. But she got slammed on what I thought was an entertaining video, and it ended up yeah. – I remember her tweeting about it. She was very upset, and she never made a video after that. And that's when her channel was starting to pick up steam too. And, and it's sad, but, um, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's, it can be intimidating, man, and it, it, it can be shitty as well. I mean, being a content creator, as you know, putting yourself out there is uh, – it, it can be scary at times. It really can be. Yeah, it really can be. I mean, you know, the crazy thing is, now that you mention it, I do actually remember because I don't typically watch a lot of anime to the point of Yu-Gi-Oh level obsession like I have right now. Like Yu-Gi-Oh stuff like Google sending me all types of notifications when some new Yu-Gi-Oh stuff is happening from all around the world. I'm watching all the YouTube videos I can watch. I'm reading articles. I'm just looking at random Yu-Gi-Oh content all the time. So I don't really do that with anime anymore, but I did do that with Dragon Ball Super. I think that was last year or the year before last. I don't really remember. I think it was with the Tournament of Power. I think that was the year before last, right? 
And yeah. I was watching um, just YouTube videos, and I remember there was like theory videos where people would get really, really pissed, super serious about those videos. And I remember that like this one guy, I remember his name was Dooley, and I used to love watching Dooley's videos because Dooley's videos. I mean, I got what he was doing, but I think other people didn't really get what he was doing. He would just right. watch something and just take it to like the 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 twelfth level. Like he'll look at something and it'll say Susie crossed the street. It's like, well, did Susie cross the street due to the interdimensional peril she was trying to escape <laughs> that was on the previous street before? Find out right now. And then he would go into this epic rant about all these amazing possibilities that he was just kind of thinking about off the top of his head that he took the time to write a script and edit together some stuff. It was honestly, for me, it was just supplemental Dragon Ball Super content that was enjoyable. And I loved watching it. But I remember the comments was like, you maniac, you fool. These are very nice words I'm choosing right now. It was like, I can't believe that you would say such things about Goku. Trunks is the best. Da, 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 da. And then people just going yeah. absolutely nuts on this dude all the time where he has to constantly defend himself, even against other YouTubers going after him because they don't like his theories. I just thought it was insane. Like, I, I, just, I, I just really think it's kind of weird. Like, I feel like YouTube is a place where it's like, if you don't like somebody, just don't watch them. Because if you don't yeah. watch them, um, the funny thing is YouTube will stop recommending you them and even stop recommending recommending people like them. Like, I don't know how you YouTube even, does it, but they figure out they're like, oh, this guy is is a YT Dan esque YouTuber. So right. if you watch YT Dan's content, you'll watch this other guy's content. And they just kind of do that. You can even hit not interested. Yeah, that's a fun little feature that's been around since 2006. You can even hit not interested. And the videos of that channel will forever go away. Yeah, it's very. I completely agree with you. And uh, yeah, that that's that's bad when the community is infighting. I will say the Yu-Gi-Oh community, uh, YouTube wise, very great. I mean, yeah. everyone. There was there was one instance where someone in the TCG community called me out. Ended up apologizing. It's in the past. No hard feelings. Um, but Same. besides that <laughs> instance, which was like. To, what, did you say? Did you say gauge? No, I said same. I didn't say gauge. No, I oh, said, said same. same. No, I said same. I gonna, no, I was gonna say no. Gauge is great. <laughs> yeah, gauge. No, gauge is great. Yeah, it was actually like me and him was actually really cool at that event. Uh, no, he's, but yeah, I was he's just saying the same. Similar thing happened to me. <laughs> yeah, I did. I ever tell you who that was for me? I don't think you told me who it was for you. Um, for for that had that whole Yu Gi Oh incident. Yeah, I'm not gonna say any names. Oh but. yeah, I didn't want to say any names either. I didn't want to. I didn't want to put out there because it's like water under the bridge. And it was, no, exactly, yeah. exactly. It but will, I it will keep but, people guessing. But it's I, not a big deal. But I, but I feel it though. It's like I mean, honestly, it, it's just like that. The thing about you, not not even YouTube, like. Like Yu-Gi-Oh is a very primal game. And I know this is going to sound really weird and I'm going Joe Rogan on you right now. I'm getting all crazy now. But listen, Yu-Gi-Oh is a very primal game. You think about the sim the simplistic notion of 2500 always loses to 3000. You know what I mean? So you got these guys that feel like they're 3000 level guys. You got these Seto Kaiba personalities in the Yu-Gi-Oh community. And they and they feel like they're best or better than. And for whatever reason, they feel like that. They might have all the cars. They might have tremendous skill. They might have some regionals or some tops or whatever the case may be. And then you just got these other guys who are either the Joeys and the Yugis just run around here with their beat sticks and their Unga Bunga decks. These guys that are like Seto Kaiba level, it's like you can't tell them anything. They don't want to know anything. They just want to right. impose their will upon you. Yep. And I kind of yep. I kind of feel that a lot in the Yu-Gi-Oh community, but I eventually ironically, just like in the Yu-Gi-Oh anime, those those Kaibas come around. Every they do come around eventually. There are some straight up toxic folks and, you know, I've been kind of blessed to not really deal with them too much, but like Same. most of the people that come around, even if they're all like, you know, you pathetic, you pathetic idiot, you made a misplay. They'll be back in the next stream to be like, man, I love this guy. So it's it's very like, 
it's it's a funny type of relationship, but I feel like it's uniquely Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't feel like no other um, anime or even game trains you from the beginning to almost pick a lane of like who you are. And then you either become something different or you really dig deep into like this character trait. Like, I feel like if anything, I'm more of a Joey or more of like a... Um, I always called him a uh, kid Yugi, but Yugi Moto. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm in that area. I'm like a Joey or a Yugi Moto. I like, I want to be a Kaiba. I wish I was a Kaiba like a Joey, but I just know I'm not a Kaiba. I'm just the kind of guy that like, I like playing with my toys and enjoying what I have. You know what I mean? It's like, I won't stress that I don't have three blue eyes, but I mean, well, shit, if I can get three blue eyes, that'd be great. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I feel it. Yeah, I feel like I'm probably like a My Valentine because I know how to duel. I know all the concepts of it, but I just never win if I do duel. So that's probably <laughs> more. <laughs> little, oh, little, no. anime sorry, little anime sorry humor. Sorry, sorry, all you Mys out there, all you My fans out there. <laughs> all the yeah, all the big fans of My Valentine. Yeah, all yeah. All, all four of you My fans out there. And actually, <laughs> actually, the crazy thing is My doesn't even get any love for like waifu love. Like everybody talks no. about everybody, every other female on Yu Gi Oh as a waifu. They never talk about why. But hey, I'm down with Mai. You know, like what I'm, is Mai? I'm fine like, with Mai too. But you know, to be fair, Mai is 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 basic, and that's why she doesn't get any love. She doesn't really deserve. I'm just I'm just spitting the truth there. I'm getting a little Joe Rogan on you. Mai is very basic. She's built up like, oh, this is an amazing strong woman who can duel with any character in the show, and then she never wins. She beats John Claude Magnum. Oh, great win, Mai. We've waited the whole show for that big who, win. Who, then, who, who summoned a ninja? Who summoned a ninja? Who was and actually a she, real man. Yeah, yeah. And she gets a win after she sells her soul to the devil in oh, season no. four. That's the only way she ends Wait, up Wait, hey, come win. on now. Talking about anime, I'm glad you're here. That, for me, my teenage years, my like young adult teenage years, when I saw Joey... Put it all on the line and don the red eyes armor to oh, fight dude. for my I just I couldn't be, that was the most awesome Yu-Gi-Oh thing I had ever seen and they never did it again in the main series like in Duel Monsters I just thought no. like 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 anytime you got in trouble I said as soon as Joey puts on that armor it's a wrap <laughs> like that's what I just kept thinking like as soon as Joey puts this armor on there's nothing anybody can do that's amazing. Well, that Joey's duel against Val and that armor duel, a lot of people forget this. I think that's the last duel he ever had in his character arc. Oh, really? That was his last yeah, think, duel? Think about it, because he duels against Valen with the armor. Then he right? duels immediately against Mai and loses, loses his soul to the Ori Kalkos. And then in the final season, they're in Egypt. I don't think he duels in Egypt. So I think that's his really the last duels that he Whoa, has. Oh, I man, you just brought so much like enlightenment to me. I'm like, yeah, that, that man, was Joey's for, swan man. song. Wow. I can't that was his swan song, dude. The armor. I can't bring much enlightenment when it comes to the card game, duel links, TCG, but the least I can do is be a weeb when you need me to be one. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> hey, hey, I will hey, Dylan uh weeb everything. I, I'm down with that. Oh yeah, we. I I tried to start a channel about two and a half years ago uh, called Dylan from Anime, and I was gonna review all like different shows. I did a few My Hero Academia reviews. I enjoyed doing it, but it was just um, it was just too time consuming, and yeah. like I I would just it, it's just hard, man. I, it's fun to make content, but it's if if my YouTube channel was bringing me in enough revenue where I would where I was very comfortable, then I would consider doing a side yeah. project, but. That is not the case right now. That probably will never be the case. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it, the the weird thing about YouTube is, I feel like I joined it like a little too late. I feel like I joined it right after everybody went from rags to bitches. Everybody got super rich, and then I joined on. They said, "All right, stop giving the money away." <laughs> yeah, so I like, yeah. So oh. I mean, YouTube's <laughs> what YouTube pays you is horrible. And then my favorite, I mean, I I've been very grateful to um to have amazing people support me via super chat i do a lot of live streams over on my channel and i, I mean, did the just amount see your of, live stream earlier today the guitar hero one oh yeah you liked it man yeah i was actually listening to it in the background as i was working earlier today 
Oh, dude, that's amazing! I didn't even know you were there. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm. I'm a um, lurk. I'm a live stream lurker. I'm pretty bad. I'm always lurking that, in somebody's live chat. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, that's completely fine. And like today uh, in the live stream, like the total donation amount was like a little over a hundred dollars, oh, which is snap. amazing. Were they donating um, and, for you to play certain songs or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Donation requests and all that stuff. And there have been live streams before during, like, the Talking Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast, which we haven't done in a while because there's no anime going on. We'll resume that in sevens, where, like, the Super Chats bring in in one session, like, three, four hundred dollars. Like, it's insane. Oh, yeah. Um, but YouTube takes 30 to 33 percent of that. <laughs> so, like, yeah, if you if you bring in, <laughs> if you bring in, uh, you know, a hundred dollars in a live stream, you only keep like sixty five to seventy of that of the dollars. Yeah. Which is insane. I mean yeah. like YouTube takes so much and so even they're not paying you well. They don't give you good um payouts with the uh with the donations and stuff. It's just uh it's just a yeah, it's a jank site, man. It really hey, is. Hey, let me let me ask you this and I'm, and this is a random kind of off topic, but it, it is That's kind funny. of on topic. So, have you ever <laughs> told anyone that you done did like Yu-Gi-Oh type stuff and they ask you the first question is, "Oh, so do you do you get paid? Do you make the money?" And then you're like, "Yeah." And they're like, "Cool, let me take a look at your video." And then they whip out YouTube on their on their phone. They they've never even logged in. They look, search your channel up, click on your channel, and then you get like a a Maserati ad or like a crazy luxury <laughs> item ad rolls before your channel goes. Has that ever happened to you? That is that is unfortunately never happened to me. That no. happened to me, and they rolled a Mercedes ad, and the guy looked at me was like, "Wow, Dan got Mercedes advertising on his <laughs> channel," and I was like, "Shit, I'm like Mercedes advertising on my channel. Why don't we get twenty five cent on this video?" Yeah, right, right. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, oh, who's this video made me money? two bucks, but I guess Maserati <laughs> can advertise on the bumper. Yeah, I'm like, whatever. Like, you know, and it's so funny. Like, like people like do leave ridiculous comments about the ads they receive, which I do think is funny. Like, yeah, I got a Trump ad before this. Like, damn, what's up with that? I'm like, I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> Looks like Trump is advertising again. <laughs> like, yeah, like yeah, I, I guess that I guess that election's <laughs> right around the corner. Like, yeah, yeah I, I think. <laughs> I think one of the funniest things is when people, yeah, try try to like, try to insinuate that you're responsible for the advertisements that come up on the channel, which you have no control over. You have no control. It's like, hey, um, is there any reason, Dylan, I got a Viagra advertisement before your video? And I'm oh like, uh, no. No, Viagra uh, X Fan 05. There well, is well, it's based on what you've been clicking on. So either you've been. Yeah, on, well, that's true. Either, either yeah, you've look, been look on the words. hub or, you know, I don't yeah, know, look, look I don't know where you've been recently. I don't know where you've been hanging out. <laughs> what you've been clicking on. It's incognito <laughs> mode, at least will, you know, keep your cookies away. Maybe. Well, that's what they tell us. Allegedly. That's even true. Probably when you click incognito mode, it just opens up your. Uh, FBI agents <laughs> uh, mirror. My, fa my click favorite click. is when you click it, when you click incognito mode. It says, "Be careful for a few of these things." And one of the things it lists is person standing behind you. I'm not even. I'm not even <laughs> kidding. If you load up incognito, they warn you about. Hold, on, let me do it real quick. Cro you, yeah, your activity might. Oh, do they not do it anymore? Oh, they definitely uh, used to do it. Well, I, I mean, honestly, sometimes you got to make stuff idiot proof. I'm so I wouldn't well, I, so I wouldn't you know I wouldn't uh, doubt it <laughs> but they yeah, probably they, no, they take it away because someone complained to... they're like what do you think I'm stupid and they were like yeah <laughs> we can just take it off whatever oh they definitely used to have it when your activity might be still visible to people standing behind <laughs> you I know they did. hopefully someone can back me up in the comment section I know they that used to be a message that would come yeah, up yeah there's all there's always a, a, pri a internet private eye that would be like yeah well I found it on the uh the website of whatever here's a screenshot like thanks I actually what I really feel like YouTube should have is like uh like I know they have a feed for like videos and and then you have that like community tabs feed but it's like I feel like that community tabs feed should be more alive like I don't like I don't know why it doesn't it doesn't feel the same as like a Twitter or something like that but my audience is on YouTube so if I want to talk to my YouTube audience you know community tab is the only thing I really have cuz everybody's not on Twitter or Discord or wherever cuz everybody's everybody's all over the place yeah, I uh, I agree. I never use the YouTube community outreach, um, and the reason I don't personally is honestly it's fear that 
I'm gonna post something and people are just gonna get annoyed with me and unsubscribe. And that's genuinely <laughs> the reason why I don't I don't like to spam yeah. people. Um, but even though that's such a stupid thought because most people, I'd say like 80 to 90% of people that are subscribed to you, they, they want to hear all that stuff. They want to yeah. get updates via YouTube. And so that's a, that's something that I've always been kind of having an inner battle with. Like, I don't like to, you know, do certain things because I'm worried people are just going to get angry with me. It's why my, my videos for episode reviews are literally Yu-Gi-Oh! Brains episode 20 review. Like, I do not like to do anything that might be borderline clickbait or misleading. I mean, I've never done anything like that. And, you know, I just, I don't know. I feel like it's at points it might be playing it too conservatively because that's also an issue that you run when you, when you do something like that. Yeah. I think in you on you in YouTube, uh, I think honestly, it's a it's a matter of getting in your own way, because at the end of the day, people are going to unsubscribe and like your videos or do whatever, you know, and you'll never know. Like it's their prerogative. So if you do something, you wouldn't know if you call someone to unsubscribe or not, unless you made a video and was like, hey, fuck you guys, the video. And it was 10 minutes long of Dylan just <laughs> lambasting every single person by name. Video. And then you start the losing at- thousands of subs. Maybe that was the video. Maybe the video caused that. But outside of that, you don't really have any way of knowing. Like <laughs> people unsubscribe. And according to the new data that we have on that back end thing, people unsubscribe from the thun- thumbnail alone. Like they'll just look and look at the thumbnail and be like, ugh, it's YT Dan again. Be gone forever. Yeah. Like, yeah, I know, and you're, and you're absolutely right. And there's nothing you can do to prevent that because, as you said, it's it's people's right, and it absolutely is. If people want to unsub, people want to unsub, unsub. That is completely understandable and and cool. Um, it's just, yeah, I guess the fear of doing something that might insinuate it and speed up that process for people <laughs> that are maybe borderline. That's yeah. kind of what scares me. But there's a lot of things that I need to just stop worrying about when it comes to my youtube channel and just and just go for it well you know, man you're at 60 60 su- k subs so it's kind of like man you're doing something right so i mean yeah, i don't think yeah, you should really be I, afraid I of that too much yeah i just hit um i literally just passed earlier today 66 oh nice. so i am i'm pretty much officially two-thirds of the way there man i mean that that's yeah. my end goal uh and if that ever happens which it'll still probably take a few years if it ever does happen I'd be over the moon, man. That's that's my end goal. Man, I don't really care about subscriber count, but like just the plaque would be really cool for like a studio. Yeah, I, I I really want the plaque too. I I do want the plaque. I want the plaque more than I want the subs. If that makes sense. Oh, like, I completely agree. Yeah, I completely. I, I yeah. could not agree more with that. Could not agree. Because a hundred thousand subs or whatever is great. You know, I wouldn't mind that. You know, it would change my YouTube in a different in a in a a lot of different ways because a lot of things like like i don't know if a lot of the viewers know this but when you hit certain levels on youtube with subscriber count you hit certain things on their back end so you know once you get to 100k like youtube looks at you as like oh this is a legit youtuber this is an actual value to our site let's start um handling him and his account or her with kid gloves like they actually assign you some help Um, if you go to the YouTube studio, you get more access to things. You get more time there. You can use the higher grade equipment, like all kinds of stuff happens when you hit a hundred K, but a lot of people just don't use it because, you know, either a, you know, you're not in a good location. Like if you live in Detroit, you know, it might be hard to get to LA or New York. Um, especially if, you know, you have a fledgling YouTube channel. Uh, and then if you live in LA or New York, some people just don't know about it. Like you're, you get so deep into life and the YouTube, uh, rabbit hole, pretty much. You just never pop your head up to say, oh man, all these other tools are available to me because YouTube will tell you about it, but they'll tell you about it in a million spam emails that they send you about everything else. The invite to come to the YouTube, uh, space would just be amongst the other garbage. So it's just kind of, it's a weird, it's a weird thing. But I mean, if you get to that hundred K, I mean, I mean, you're pretty good, but but right now you're like 3000 away from greatness right now. So actually, I mean, you should just stop right there actually. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm hoping to hit 70. Uh, my, my roadmap is like 70 by June, 75 by the end of 2020. 
And then if everything keeps up consistently, I'm hoping to get to that mark before Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's ends, which would be like early 2023. Um, and I know that's a far way away, but hey, it takes time, man. It takes time to uh, accumulate, and I'm not going to say like, oh, I think I can hit it this year. No, unless I upload like three videos that go viral and get a million views, which is not going to happen. It's going to take a long time, and that's completely cool, yeah. and uh, hopefully it happens. As long as it happens at some point, I'll feel like I – um, I, re I mean, I already feel like I've – done so much more than I ever was ever going to achieve when I started this channel, um, yeah. which I'm super thankful for. But like, as you just mentioned about all those things, that's the real mark. And uh, it would just be amazing to, to see that that six figure count one day. Oh, you cut out for a second. Oh, sorry. My audio kept recording. Uh, it just must have been Discord that cut out. Oh, OK. OK, cool. Yeah. Yep. See, there you go. Discord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Discord's great, man. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I'm <laughs> recording on Audacity, luckily, so, you know, it's fine. Audacity won't cut out like Discord. Just like that. <laughs> oh, it cut out again? Yeah. <laughs> Audacity <laughs> right. won't cut out like that. <laughs> well, now it's great. <laughs> now now it's uh, comical, yeah. Well, don't worry. We're, we're good to go, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'll I'll get into the studio and edit it up. Um, yeah, you're good. But I you're did. Good. But I did want to ask you though. So, outside of just like the Yu-Gi-Oh anime, like, do you watch any other anime? Like, do you even care about any other anime? Do you even like anime? Hmm. That is, dude. Dan, you're hitting the hard. You're asking <laughs> the hard hitting questions, dude. They don't call um, me the number one duelist and journalist for nothing. <laughs> yeah, he he reviews the Yu-Gi-Oh anime, but does he like anime? Right. Uh, <laughs> let me These uh, are the deepest questions of my life. <laughs> but um, actually, I, I hate I, anime. Anime killed my parents. <laughs> yeah, I hate people who like anime. No, um, I I am a uh, I would say an avid fan of anime. Okay, I'm not really into the um like the etchy etchier stuff. Um. I, I want to watch, like, a, a Slice of Life anime, which I have not done. I've really only seen Shonen. I've watched Soul Eater in full, which oh, I yes. enjoyed. I, I watch, I'm watch. i caught up with My Hero Academia. Love that show. Look forward to it every Saturday. I know that's basic, but I, I do genuinely, maybe not the fandom, but I do enjoy the show <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a scandal every other week with that show that's very uh, minute. And then I have seen a sh shows like Death Parade, Death Parade and Code Geass, two incredible anime. Um, okay. But I don't watch anime that much. It's very difficult for me to get into an anime because I'm so I don't really watch TV much either like outside yeah. of Impractical Jokers I don't watch any sort of TV um, and it's hard for me to get into anime because there's so many that I want to choose from there's so many that I want to watch and my time is so limited. My free time is genuinely so limited. I work yeah. at Hilton part time. I uh, do YouTube full time, and that's more than forty hours a week. And oh, yeah. I have a girlfriend. I have friends. I want to try and, and have that's a social all life the as hours well. Hours per week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, hey, girl, girlfriend, <laughs> as you know, with your such, it gotta take priority. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, yes, um, have to. Does it Spe rightfully so? Of course, girlfriend. Gonna... <laughs> you, have, you have to let them go first. <laughs> Yeah, and rightfully so. I'm not uh, complaining about that. But, you know, at the same time, it is all very time-consuming. Now, I'm not complaining about not having a lot of time, but in some ways it sucks because, yeah, there's a lot of anime I'd like to see. But um, I'm not a, a fan of, like, again, like, I would not consider myself a hardcore anime fan. I love listening yeah. to openings and endings from different shows, but my my percentage of watching any anime in particular is probably under... About 5%. I got hooked on My Hero Academia, and I know there's so many other shows out there to watch, but I just I just don't have a lot of time, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. I can definitely feel you on that. I'm, I mean, I have not found any other time to do anything. I mean, I can't even play video games like I used to, and I really Dude, used to love Dude, same, and just, it sucks, man. It yeah. sucks. I used to love just grabbing that cereal bowl. Like, even when I became an adult. Grabbing that cereal bowl, like, I'm doing nothing but playing video games all day. I'm not doing anything else. I'm just eating a cereal. I'm just going to play games. See, and I would go I would go to ShopRite, and I would buy a couple bags of candy, and that's what I would snack on while I was doing a video game session. I mean, I remember one of my 
one of my I'm, I'm so proud of this session i was a trophy hunter now are you playstation or xbox playstation playstation all the way good yeah. choice <laughs> um, and i'm i was a i was a tr very avid trophy hunter back in the day i think i have like 30 something platinums like i loved collecting trophies and i was playing bloodborne which is a very brutal game and it's a very horrifying game as well oh yeah uh, and i had i had beaten the story a few times i was just cleaning up going for trophies I, I started at 10 p.m. and I fully charged my PS4 controller and I unplugged it around 11.30 p.m. and the controller died in the same session and I looked up at the clock and it was 7.15 a.m. I played Bloodborne Whoa. for nine straight hours and I'll never forget, I went to bed at like, this was back in my you know community college days so my schedule allowed me to do that most nights uh, because I picked all late classes. So I went to bed at like 7.30, 8 a.m., and I had like two vivid, horrifying nightmares, and I never, <laughs> I never, ever have dreams. I'll have maybe one dream every six months. Did and you I die had in two, a dream? Uh, no, I didn't die in the dream. <laughs> but I had two. Well, if I died in the dream, I wouldn't be here. No, I'm kidding. I don't believe that. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, had, I had two horrifying nightmares, and uh, it's just funny because you get zoned out into this really creepy world and uh, it really does affect you subconsciously and i i just love ga gaming man i really miss it did you ever have a yugi dream before like a Yu-Gi-Oh dream yeah oh yeah the only Yu-Gi-Oh dream i had and i remember it it was me and a couple of my friends that are usually on the channel for the podcasts and i'll bring them on when Yu-Gi-Oh brains was going on to like review like the episodes and stuff we were all reacting to the new opening that was set to begin in a week and okay. the opening music was like demon music, and we were all, and, and we were all like, "Oh, this is kind of weird." Like, as you know, the camera's rolling, so we we can't like you know you, you have to be a little you have to play for the camera a bit. And we're like, "Oh, this is kind of weird." Yeah, this music is not what I I would expect. Um, and all the old characters were like in the montage. I think Big the Cat from Sonic was also there. Um, it was really really weird. And then I. Then it's I woke like up. a Yugi I I nightmare. <laughs> I think, yeah, it was. It wasn't even really a, a scary nightmare. It was just a trippy. Yeah, the devil music was kind of weird, but um, <laughs> yeah. Let, let's just say the final opening of Reigns was not like that at all. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to say that. <laughs> That's the only Yu-Gi-Oh! related dream, at least that I can think of off the top of my head, that I've ever had. Oh my god. I can't even remember any Yu-Gi-Oh! dreams I had, but I remember I got carded in a dream, and I woke oh boy. up as I was dying and turning into a card, and it was, like, really funny, because I wasn't, um, I wasn't, like, like, original dub turning into a card. I was, like, turning into a card for kids style, so I had, so I had that whack um i want to say it's like it's uh it's like an echo so it's like yeah. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. yeah yeah as as i'm as i'm fading away into the card doing the grandpa moto pose yep you yep did. grandpa moto <laughs> <laughs> i really i mean honestly when i first watched that first episode of Yu Gi Oh and, Pe and pegasus use the <laughs> a possessed videotape <laughs> to do a yugi through the tv i was like <laughs> Whoa! I think I think people overlooked that a little too much. If I'm going to be honest, with you. The, the 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 absolute ridiculousness of that first duel. This man, which, and then and then Yugi's about to win, and Pegasus is like, "Time's up, Yugi boy!" And then he just takes Grandpa's soul instead, even though Yugi had the duel in hand. Well, actually, I mean, I kind of like. Here's my here's my random anime theory. You can go ahead and hate me in the comments and start burning your pitchforks right now. I think Pegasus <laughs> used the power of his Millennium Eye. To literally preset all that shit on that videotape, even the snarkiness. And he knew at the end of the tape that he was probably going to lose that duel. So he planned on taking the nearest soul in the room that wasn't Yugi's. And just so happens, it was three other people in the room. So he was like, cool, I get to take my pick. I think he would have took any random soul. We'll took my soul. We'll took your soul. Anybody's soul who was in the room to entice Yugi to go. I think that's what it was automatically set up to do. I don't that's, know. That's interesting. So you don't think Pegasus was ever there in physical form? You think it was all just kind of an illusion? No, Pegasus was reading his comic books and eating cheese and drinking fruit juice. What you think he was doing? Well, we're, we're, we're drinking wine. We're, we're not talking. <laughs> 
<laughs> we're not talking the English dub here. Hey, we're talking. Four, <laughs> hey, four kids. He was eating. He was watching cartoons, drinking, drinking fruit and, juice. and having <laughs> fruit juice and cheese. And Brock was also going to join him with a jelly donut. <laughs> oh my lord! Don't forget those greasy burgers they sell in Tokyo often. Oh yeah, and them greasy burgers. <laughs> When I went to Tokyo, I had one of those like uh, I don't know what you, I don't know what they're called. I forget, but you ever see like those things in anime? It's like a fried fish thing. Like it looked like a fish cake. And it's got yeah, like, yeah. I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it was pretty nasty. But yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, I can't imagine that being good. But, but people in anime seem to really like it. So I was like, let me let me try this out. It's, it's actually kind of crazy thing walking around in Japan. And I know this is gonna sound really stupid and very ignorant, but. It really does look like the anime, <laughs> like everything. Like it really, no, I've, I've, really I've heard does. that from a lot of people, which is really cool. I mean, I it's funny. My friends always got on my case about it. I don't really have, believe it or not, a burning interest to go to Japan, which hey. I know like st- always stuns a lot. Like I want to go to England. I want to go to Ireland. I want. I'd love to go to um, the Netherlands or like the Nordic countries, like Sweden, Finland, or Australia, New Zealand. They're all above Japan for me. I don't have that much of a burning interest to go to Japan, which is kind of strange. I could definitely understand that. I think you, but I think somebody like you could definitely enjoy it, especially from the anime perspective, because even when I went down there, I didn't really know how, you know, I mean, you hear about anime being a thing in Japan, but I mean, that's almost the same as like people talking about cheeseburgers being a thing here in America. Everybody doesn't eat cheeseburgers, but some people do. But... When I went to Japan and I actually got to go to Akihabara and I was like down in basically this anime video game town world, giant statues of Gundam figures, all kinds of stuff. It was amazing. And when I actually went into the Sega store at the top floor, they had a Yu-Gi-Oh floor in the Sega store, which was weird. And at the time they were playing um, the Vrain's uh, theme song. So when I went, I was on the escalator and they had the Vrains theme song on a loop. And it was that part where, um, like, you know how you're watching the Vrains season one theme song and it's that part where Go is running on the bridge? Yep, yep, the verse, the very first yeah, verse. Yeah, the very yeah. first verse. I heard the first verse as I'm riding up this escalator. And I'm like, okay, I'm like, what? I'm like, this isn't the Vrains theme song. And it was like, when you're in. Is the brains oh, like, yep. oh snap it is the brains theme song that's when much, i got up amazing. there by the way by the way you just sang that incredibly well do do it do it again oh i did is it when you in the brains, the brains. <laughs> Dude, <that's- laughs> it's like i loved that like i really did love that scene song like i remember like back when i was like really young i used to be like Man, this song is trying to make you feel something. I used to say that all the time as a little kid. I guess I didn't really fully understand what that means. But right. like Vrains really does like pull at your like emotions. Like the whole it's just got a lot of energy in the theme song. You know what I mean? Oh, of course. Yeah. I mean, I, I uh, he's a uh, he sang the first theme song for uh JoJo's Bizarre Adventure as well. Tommy, that's his name. And he uh just oh, very deep. He did actually. He, he did Sono Chino Sadame. Yep. Sono Chino Sadame. Uh, he did it much better wow. than that. But <laughs> jo, yeah, he, uh, jo. Oh, again, <laughs> again, you you can if you have a if you have a bit of a conversation with me, no matter what, I will bring that that weeb logic. Um or that oh weeb my trivia. God. Um, yes. But yeah, he uh, he just has such a powerful voice, doesn't he? And uh, yes. yeah, he sang that opening incredibly well. Uh, it's probably probably my my second. I like the last opening a little more, but there was only three openings for Vrains. But that was a uh, that was a fun one. It lasted the entire first season. Yeah, I need to finish watching Vrains. I just really uh, I just felt I fell off on watching Vrains because I was gonna try to watch Vrains and make content, and I realized I'm like, this is not how I want to enjoy this Yu Gi Oh series because I really do enjoy the Yu Gi Oh anime, and I was one of those people that was like one of those uh, Gen Wonders, like wasn't anything better than Duel Monsters in mm-hmm. Battle City? Give me them Duel Discs and the Egyptian Gods. Y- y'all talking about Pendulum Summon? You don't know what's up. I was like that guy but then i like started watching more anime beyond 5ds 
and then I actually saw like the beginning part of arc five and I was like, wow, this is actually like really good, but I didn't yeah, finish enjoyable. it. So it's like, so I was like, I don't think I want to watch it and try to like make a bunch of commentary on it because it's kind of taken away from the the spectacle like like absolutely you, yeah it's like and i yeah. i could not agree with you more on that that's a big reason why i stopped also doing the the dylan from anime stuff because i was like you know I, i'm not enjoying the show that much if i'm focused on just making content on it like i really yeah. want to just enjoy my hero academia or just enjoy code geass or soul eater or death parade or whatever it is and uh yeah. you know it's different for me with you gil because i've now associated oh that is an advertisement on my phone i have now associated <laughs> i've now associated you gil with with doing commentary and i love doing it like it's part of my routine with you gil yeah. so it doesn't take away from the show's enjoyment at all for me but with other anime and other pieces of media yeah, it, it absolutely does. So I, I completely agree with you there. And then it makes it more of a burden to watch it. And yeah. so you don't really want to watch the show. And yeah, I would definitely recommend getting back into Vrains and picking it back up. Now, do you have any interest in Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens? Have you seen anything about Sevens so far? Okay, well, this is the thing. I have seen Sevens, and I've seen what they are, I guess, from... I've actually, my only experience of Sevens has been through your channel. So oh, I, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I have seen I don't know if sevens. that's good or bad. <laughs> and no, no, I mean, that's pretty, I mean, I think it's pretty good. I mean, you've given a lot of, like, a uh, strong explanation on what it is, and you're kind of like, I kind of feel like you, outside of you, you know, saying your opinion here and there, but I kind of feel like you're just saying, like, this is what it is, and that's, what do you think about it? And I, I, I do respect that because it's like a lot of folks would just say, oh, this is trash and I hate it. And if you think it's trash, crush that like button. Like, but I right. think that, uh, you know, from what I've seen, I, I now, the thing about Yu-Gi-Oh! for me, I don't really judge Yu-Gi-Oh! And this is going to really sound really dumb. I don't judge Yu-Gi-Oh! on like what the characters look like and even the story. I, what really speaks to me of Yu-Gi-Oh! is the duel. Cause I feel like the duels gotcha. say more than the show ever could. It's so much emotion in a duel, and you know because you're watching the anime, it's scripted. But a good duel can make you think that that these guys are dueling in front of you, like off the table. Like you don't know if Yugi's gonna draw the next t card for game. You're so involved in it. You're like, how could he possibly come back with no cards in hand, and this guy has six cards on the field? How could he possibly come back from this? And they somehow come back from it with some miraculous card that either you've never heard of or a miraculous card that you have seen and always overlooked. So that's the type of stuff for me that I enjoy about the anime. So I don't know if Sevens is going to have that. But I would imagine it will have a lot of spectacular, nostalgic quick duels you know if they're doing speed duels i guess it ain't gonna be no to be continued because you know it's overturned too so i don't well, know yeah, i i don't even think they're doing speed duels you might have meant to say rush duels oh rush duels yeah rush duels yeah i don't know how that rush duel thing is gonna work out it does seem a little strange but i mean and, yeah. and this is another thing that's coming to my mind are they just gonna drop speed duels and just run off with rush duels or or like what's gonna happen with that because it's like I invested a little bit into some speed duel cards and I've been playing speed duels along with duel links and stuff like that. And me personally, I don't think that speed duels and duel links should exist, you know, as a paper card game and a digital card game with no crossover. Like if speed duels existed and there was a code in the pack, like for Pokemon and you could use redeem the, like the physical pack for in-game currency or something anything redeem it for anything like even if they gave you a pat on the back i mean i would take that but if they're not giving you that there's like no value there so it's like i'm not truly interested in playing speed duels but i'll play it because you know i just love to play the game but is rush duels going to be a whole new thing i, I think it get it gets really convoluted if you're going to have rush duel speed duel and master duel like and they're all three different sets of cards and they can't be interchanged yeah. like like i don't know it, it seems weird i agree well i have a video that's coming out tomorrow at the time of recording so it's probably going to be out by the time this gets uploaded um i i do think that rush jewels are coming to the tcg and i'll have the hmm. video with three reasons as to why um 
tomorrow. Spoilers. Um, spoilers, yeah. You know, this will probably <laughs> come out after that. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, it, it is confusing, and it is a little convoluted. But I, I think there's going to be a good amount of nostalgia, and I think there's a lot of people who are treating this show very similarly to how they treated Zexel. The Zexel story, for me, you know, I'm not as invested in the duels over story as you are, but everyone views the an anime differently, so I completely respect that. Yeah. But I think the story and I think the duels will be fun and enjoyable at the end of the day. And yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it ultimately. I think I don't I like I don't know if it's just like the anime, but I think the anime really enamored me with the whole concept of a duel. Like I talked about it in my last podcast, but that Kaiba versus Yugi duel was so incredible to me it was mind-blowing and i felt like i had never seen that before but i'm sure i've seen like an underdog turn something around at the last minute many of times but to see yugi go like that 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 famous quote you know draw your last pathetic cards like in this match and he's like my grandpa's deck has no pathetic card but it does contain and then he shows him like five cards and he shows him like like he has like a full house like he's like this is the game winning hand and he's like i can't do anything to this i just lose and then i was like what like to yeah. even see that like that blew my mind so once that blew my mind that got me hooked and every duel since then has been like super impressive like even when we were talking earlier about my like like that's what like stuck in my mind like my went in that duel and dueled this like hollywood celebrity for her for her hand in marriage but at the end of the duel because he lost he kidnaps her with an act. It was like the ninja monster he summoned. I think it was Kite Ninja, it was called, or something like that. The ninja monster, he was like, oh, like that seems like something practical that somebody might do. I'm going to summon a card and I'm going to have you jump on the field and say, who? And then when I give the signal, we're going to just run off with this duelist in their cards. Like, I'm yeah. going to I'm gonna declare yeah. a direct attack. And when you go in for the attack, you're just going to tackle him and we're going to take his shit. Like, I could see that happening in the real world. So, so to see that happen in the anime, it was just the funniest thing. Like, and it's it's all wrapped up in those duels. Like, like what's your favorite duel of all time? Well, my favorite duel of all time, and I I have a video of my top ten duels of all time. It, it's you. It's still to this day Yugi and Kaiba at um at Battle City. I think that duel okay. is just. I mean, I know it's long. I know people, especially people who are newer fans, rip it for being so long. It's six episodes. But uh, it's such a good duel, dude. The back and forth. Oh yeah. You have the Egypt. You have the Egyptian gods going at it. Then you have you know blue eyes and dark magician going at it. Red eyes gets involved. Upgrades dark paladin, blue eyes ultimate. It's such an amazing duel. Two of the most iconic duelists from the franchise, just giving it everything they had. It's the final time they've ever versed each other, not counting dark side of dimensions. And yes. for me, it's the, uh, the the best duel the franchise has ever had. But that Exodia one, that that's what I think probably the most iconic moment ever in the franchise. And Kaiba summoned Chaos Emperor Dragon that duel. And I think that was the first time he ever appeared. Oh, uh, you might be right. Yeah, you might be right about that. Yeah. Like when I saw it, I, I remember when he summoned him at the time. That was back when Chaos Emperor Dragon, Blackluster Soldier, all that stuff was like hype in the metagame. So when I saw Kaiba drop Chaos Emperor Dragon, I flipped my shit at home and called everybody I knew. Kaiba summoned Chaos Emperor <laughs> Dragon. Did you see it? No, man, I don't even watch the anime. How do you not watch the anime? Like, this is me, like, tripping out on my friends. Like, how did you not see this? Like, it was the most hmm. epic moment of all time. Like, I like I thought when he, like, I didn't know that they had Chaos Monsters in, in the anime. So when Kaiba was like, I banish one light and one dark, I was like, impossible. <laughs> like, I, I was caught up in that moment. It was insane. Oh my god, man. Man, actually I'm probably going to watch that like after this. <laughs> yeah, no you should. It's, <laughs> it's it's great, man. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Oh my. Oh, you it know really what? Is. Another good moment now we're talking about cuz Battle City is my number one anime. Like my number one Yu-Gi-Oh arc like of all time. Like Battle City, I felt like like even though it's like old school Yu-Gi-Oh Duel Monsters, I really enjoyed how the stakes were so high. Like, I, I liked how Kaiba had this, like, emboldened arrogance because he literally wields a god now. Uh, 
I, I like that exchange between like I think yeah it was Ishizu and Kaiba Ishizu was like yeah I'm gonna meet that back at the end of the tournament and Kaiba was like yeah right like <laughs> <laughs> I was like yes and then then he beat up that one dude in the alley with obelisk <laughs> like the dude like he was like bullying some cards he was like here he like take the card you want it he's like Ugh, this card sucks give me another one he said but I don't have any other cards he was like well I need two because this one's garbage and then Kaiba <laughs> shows up was like uh let me let me wreck this dude for some reason and just beats him in the alley with an obelisk and then when obelisk obelisk is also my favorite guy too when obelisk attacked through mirror force that was like the best thing ever to see in anime because i think it was loomis and umbra and they were on top of that tower that tag duel which is also amazing yep. with mass bees and oh Yugi. yeah and Yugi attack not Yugi Kaiba attacks with Obelisk, and one of them activated Mirror Force, and I forgot what he said, but he said something like, "Like your puny trap can affect a god," and then it shows Obelisk literally punch through the Mirror Force energy, and it shatters like glass, and you hear the glass sound effect, and I and they was like, "Oh!" and it was just like. I don't know. It's, it's like something about like that bravado, like that that Kaiba has that confidence and that power. Yeah, and yeah. Obelisk was just like full synergy. Like honestly, when I do play like Hazies or Thunder Dragons or anything like that, and I play and I activate Beatdown, I feel that bravado. I feel that power. Like I do feel like I'm invoking like Kaiba's energy in that moment of Obelisk attacking through Mirror Force. Like 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 something because Mirror Force in the TCG at the time was like the pinnacle of back row. It was the apex trap card. Like in dual monsters where you don't have many special summons, a card like Mirror Force can either turn the table of the game or end the game all on its own. And like that was back in the day where cards like Fiber Jar and Cyber Jar and like all kinds of crazy powerful cards that are all banned now. Oh yeah, are all gone. But during Battle oh, yeah. City, they duel with the most broken, most powerful cards of all time. Like when Kaiba was training against the AI machine, and the AI machine flipped Cyber Jar and summoned a bunch of monsters, and it was I was like, what? I was like, they put Cyber Jar in the anime? Like every time, yep. They would, yep. every time they would do something, I was always freaking out. But my, but the most legendary moment I think of all time was how Merrick almost lost it all. Didn't even make it to the finals. Can you imagine being a villain and you get in a tournament arc and it's a card game and you brick? Like, can you imagine how that would just suck? <laughs> You're like your world domination plans all hinge on this card game and you bricked on the wing dragon of raw slifer the sky dragon and obelisk on the first turn because you put them yep. all in your deck. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Kai, it really is. Because Yuki could have straight up bricked like that. He could have drew Slifer, Obelisk, uh, and uh, Raw with a Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl on turn one. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. L. L. <laughs> like, or he could have drew Catapult Turtle instead of Dark Magician Girl, making it even more whack. Oh, well, that, my that's, God. I think, that's, I think, what I probably love because I, I, I love with the anime. It's like all these amazing, like, diabolical plans to destroy the world or kill someone or get revenge or whatever it is, it all hinges around a card game. Yes. And when you really take a step back and think about it, it's so ridiculous, but it's what I just have grown over the years to absolutely adore about the franchise. But you know, it's kind of weird. I kind of feel like this is my, this is again, side theory, not much to support it, but this is like my explanation for that. I think the world has become like, like in that world, in the world of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, for conflicts to have to be solved by card games, that would mean that as a human race, like so much time has passed. We're so much more evolved. So it's like, like, yeah, I could shoot you or I could send a drone to blow up your house. But you know what, though? I'm going to just duel you and the outcome of this duel is going to just squash this beef forever. And you're like, cool. Like, I just think that like to have just the whole capacity of like, you know what? There's no need for violence here. We can just play a card game. Like I'd like I just think that that's pretty cool. But then if you actually look at the real anime and you're not looking at four kids anime, like for example, in Bat Battle City when Joey lost his red eyes to the rare hunter and the rare hunter goes, 
now hand over your red eyes, boy. You just lost. And he goes, all right, I'll get it. He said, I prefer to take it by force. He goes, I'll get it. And then he beats Joey up in the alley <laughs> and takes it. <laughs> and he already lost. And it was just like, so this guy, that, that was the Exodia dude in Battle City. Yeah, that was the Exodia rare hunter. And, uh, when, and, and I don't know if you remember this animation. And if you ever go back and watch this, anim- this, this episode, you'll see this ridiculous animation for when Yugi calls out that the guy is playing Exodia. He like does his thing where he like bends down, he, the camera moves all around, he whips his hand, he's like, you're playing Exodia, the forbidden one. And the rare hunter's like, how did he know? <laughs> like, I think you made it obvious because you keep searching, for, <laughs> you keep drawing yeah. and searching yeah. your deck. Like you're doing something over there. <laughs> like, like, <Yeah>. I <laughs> I'm like, unless you, they- didn't he? Didn't Yugi play Exodia? Wouldn't he know? Like of right, all the people, should, and I, yeah, I know, I know. I think he does figure it out, but it takes him a, a bit of time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, it does take him. It takes him a, a long time before his anime logic kicks in. It is. Oh my god. Oh, I didn't. I didn't tell you at that moment. So when Joey dueled against Merrick and he was going in for the final attack, and his soul was being sucked away. And Merrick was about to hold the ultimate L. At the time when I first saw it, I thought Joey was going to win. I was like, they're finally about to give Joey some play. Like, Joey's going to be able to hold this over everybody's head. And then he fainted. I was like, they cheated my boy. Like, they just cheated him. I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God! It's a man. lot of great memories, dude. A man. lot of great. Memories. Oh my God! And I really want to get. I really want to get into like the other ones. The thing is, I, I I feel like when I go to these new animes and they're already like done or whatever, I'm like, man, this is like gonna be a daunting task. Like I don't know if I can actually watch all this, and then I don't watch any of it because I don't think I can finish it. Yeah, well, that's why it's you know with sevens, maybe you could just. Watch it as soon as it begins in April, and that way you can, like, get on top of it. Because I, I completely feel that. Like, if you fall 10, 15, 20 at least episodes behind a show, yeah, it's like Attack on Titan. I would love to watch, but it's too intimidating now for me to pick it up because it's so deep into the run. Or, like, a Naruto or a One Piece, forget about it. Like, there's no way. When was the last time you played the TCG? I went to Locals. In January of 2019, that was okay. probably the last time I I played with physical cards. Yeah. Oh, but okay. it's also it's also one of the only times I probably only okay. did that about three or four times in my life. Oh well, it actually cut out for a hot second. So you was like, yeah, I played in January 2019, and then it came back. I've only done that three times in my life, and I'm like, oh, what have you yeah. done? Yeah, no, 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 that's that's absolutely true. Yeah, I did it probably all around December and January okay. of 2018, 2019. I remember it was somewhat after my um my ex girlfriend had broken up with me, and I was doing it to fill a void, and uh, it <laughs> hmm. it definitely worked. I've met a lot of great people through it, and uh, it took my mind off of a lot of uh things on Friday nights, which was which was well needed. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I can feel that. Oh, you play Yu Gi Oh on Friday nights? That was like forbidden back in the day because they had magic at the place where we did Yu Gi Oh. So they oh, were really? like, yeah. So it was like Friday night magic. So they wouldn't do Yu Gi Oh on that night because, I mean, honestly, when you had a bunch of Yu Gi guys and a bunch of magic guys all in one one space, it does get a uh, hot. <laughs> I'm gonna just say hot <laughs> for for lack of a better term. It got real hot in there. Um, yeah, I, I so can they would just kind of have it like segregated. Like Yugi days are Thursdays, and Magic days were like Fridays. Well, well, back where I was at. Yeah, that's interesting. I um, they never really um, yeah, they never really played. Magic. Of course, the place I'm playing at now is, is shutting down. They've been open for 50 years, and it was just announced oh, that they're man. shutting down. But they've never, uh, they never really had magic there on Friday nights at the place I went to. Surprisingly enough. Then why are they shutting down? Um, the mother who owned it for the 50 years, the, an older woman, sold it to a different. It was like a family business, and she sold it to someone else, and he's oh. gotten rid of the hobby shop. Oh wow, that actually sucks, man. I want to open yeah, it. Was like an, shop it was like an day, icon. Actually. Yeah, that's that's insane. I, like I honestly like simply unlucky opened up a hobby shop. I want to open up one as well one day. Uh, 
It's a good I don't goal know to when, have. but I really do want to do that. Oh, what did you say? I said it's a good goal to have. Yeah, it's a fun oh, goal. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I really, I really want to, I really want to do that. Like, I feel like that's something that, like, if I was to launch that, I feel like people would really come out to that. Like, I think, I think that they definitely would. But it's like, could it be a viable business? You know, for all time, like I don't know. Um, like the the person that I used to go to, I used to go to this place called Collectible Investments in Michigan, um, and it's and that was like my regular place. Like like Collectibles was the regular place, but Pandemonium was the tournament place. Uh, and uh, you know, hanging out at Collectibles, the guy at Collectibles was always complaining about like how much of a hassle it was, how it was a, such a struggle, how it was a bad business choice. And I'm like, man, don't make it sound, you know, don't make it sound so luxurious. Like he, <laughs> he, would, he would talk about it like all the time. Um, but it was a weird place because it wasn't necessarily a, a, a train car place. It was like a collect, it was literally called collectible investments. It was about collectible items that people would buy and over time to be very valuable, like boxing gloves and baseball signed or whatever, that kind of junk. But he brought Yu-Gi-Oh into there. And at the time that was like, you know, back when Yu-Gi-Oh was first picking up. So Yu-Gi-Oh became a huge piece to his business in terms of revenue. So it got to the point where he couldn't stop because it was making him too much money, but it wasn't making him enough money, but it was making him like, you know, enough to keep the lights on and not have to worry about paying rent. But he hated it. <laughs> he, he hated it. He hated dealing yeah. with the customers. He hated yeah. it. The people would try to steal from him. You know, Ugh. he's got to buy cards and then people would just, instead of selling cards to him, they just sell them in the store, you know, and he could ask people politely not to do that. But, you know, they're kids, they're teenagers. They're not, you know, I mean, I mean, I'm not saying that a, a child or a teenager doesn't have the mental capacity to do the right thing. But I think because you're a child and a teenager, you lack the empathy to do the right thing. And you just really don't understand how much this man has put into this business so that you can come and play a children's card game from six o'clock to 10. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, just, of course. I, yeah, I just think people just didn't get it. Yeah. Um, it's hard. It's hard to own your, you know, I'm in the hospitality business and owning your own hobby shop. It's a mixture of hospitality of business management of knowing distribution and production and, and wholesale. And it, you got to, you got to have a lot of things down and a lot, you know, you could be a really good manager, but really struggle with that hospitality and being able to deal with customers and different types of people. And that immediately makes it unenjoyable for you, even if it's making you a good money, a uh, good profit. So yeah. you know, it's hard, man. It's really hard. God bless Simply Unlucky. I hope his place is uh, doing well. Well, I mean, at least, I mean, at least Simply Unlucky knows how to play the game. This guy didn't know how to play the game. So that was another right. weird like obstacle for him like you know you're running this thing that makes you this money but you don't even understand it how it works on a fundamental level so sure black luster soldier is 45 dollars but you don't know why black luster soldier is 45 dollars you know what i mean yeah it's hard to relate yeah it's hard to relate to customers and people that are mainly your your target audience at that point your target base yeah so i mean i don't know i like i really i really feel like i want to do it and i remember when i saw simply unlucky's like like his video announcing the thing like i just couldn't believe that like he actually had done it like i didn't know like like youtube is weird like sometimes they send someone subscription to the shadows and with life and everything you kind of forget about youtubers from time to time but then every now and again you'll pop on youtube and they'll might send you that rogue recommendation or you happen to see someone else talk about them and you say oh let me check up on them like that's how i found out uh about galactic god and w or whatnot i think i had like not watched a video in a long time from galactic god because i just wasn't getting recommended and i kind of forgot and then when i went back to check his channel ironically it was the day he was like retiring from youtube and i was like wow like this is like the saddest youtube search i think i've done my entire youtube searching career like it was it was like super sad to see like galactic god just stop playing uh back in the day but i saw him recently on a um yugi no no video he was he did a cameo on yugi no no's video so that was actually oh, really? pretty cool yeah he uh 
yeah, I, I forget the title of the video, but on the thumbnail of the video, you can see like a shadow outline of, you know, Galactic Guy. Like he, he does his, like, he does like a pose and he, I mean, he looks like Galactic Guy. Like, like you see the shadow outline, you see the silhouette and you're like, that's Galactic Guy. And then you click on it. And then as he's going through the video, Galactic Guy shows up as a cameo character, you know, no spoilers here. You can check it out. Uh, but it was, it was really, you know, it was really nice to see him again. It was really nice. I feel like, you know, as we were talking earlier, you know, as, as you're like a personality on YouTube, a lot of people kind of forget about that person behind there. And, uh, like every now and again, you see that real person. Like, I feel like every YouTuber has had a character break, uh, from time to time. Like there's a lot of times where I'm YT Dan on YouTube and I'm YT Dan just leaves and I'm just old, plain old Dan. Like, and it's just weird because it's like, yeah. uh, yeah. sometimes people see it, but other times people don't. And, um, you know, shout out to all the boys who like see you for who you really are outside of your character. But it is a sad thing to see someone quit YouTube and stop posting or whatever because you know that that person is still there but they don't use that account anymore because you know it's painful like it's hard to like like i honestly last year really played with the concept of just quitting and i didn't know if i was gonna quit and do a galactic god style quit and just be like man hey this is it and i'm sorry and i gotta go you know it's the best choice for me right now and it's what i gotta do but or I was just going to disappear and I didn't know what I was going to do. So, you know, I struggled with that for a while. And I think. Well, excuse me. Sorry. Um, I had a little yawn thing, but uh, so I struggled with that for a while. But I think what it eventually brought me through was me coming to a better understanding of who I was actually like the type of person that I was and the type of person I wanted to be and me kind of clearly defining um, what these identities are that I'm portraying every day because it's kind of hard to wear the mask of YouTuber and worker wherever you work and then boyfriend or husband and you know whoever you are at the base level and all these people expect you to be all these different things for them at all these different times and it gets hard to juggle all that, especially with YouTube, because YouTube is very strange. And I was trying to explain to my wife that, you know, once once you have like once you get that first 100 subscribers and YouTube sends you that email and says, man, you could fill up a movie theater with everyone who subscribed to your channel. And when you visualize that in your mind, and you think, wow, 100 people would come and sit down in the movies and watch me do a thing like doesn't have to be anything in particular. They will watch you do a thing. That's a bit humbling. And when you get to the point where we are at the 30,000 to 60,000, you kind of feel like there's like 30,000 eyes of judgment on you all the time, no matter what you do, which is why I can understand how you were talking about earlier, how using the community tab is a bit paralyzing. Um, yeah. Because, you know, you you fear the negative consequences. Like, I, I really do see that. I, I see that for real. Yeah. Um, it's hard. It's hard um, to do YouTube and, and have that same. I'm lucky because I'm, I'm pretty – I'm a very positive person in general. I've always kind of lived my life that way. And to be mm -hmm. honest, I've done my Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything ta uh, channel. It'll be four years in June or July of this year. Oh, wow. That's uh, awesome. Four full years. And I've never, I've never once considered quitting. Um, the only way I'll probably ever stop is if the Yu-Gi-Oh anime forces me to stop. I think if the Yu-Gi-Oh anime says, "Hey, we're, we're done. We're not making any more shows," which will happen eventually, it'll happen someday. Then I'll probably say, "All right, maybe I'll do a video once a month, but I'm, you, I'm really not going to focus on YouTube anymore." Yeah. Um, but you know that's something to worry about now for another three years. But uh, it's hard, yeah. And then you know if you want to stop making videos, do you leave entirely and give people a heads up, or do you just leave entirely and delete everything, or just let them be ghost accounts and never go back to them and have people wonder about what you're doing and your your well being and everything? And and yeah. there's no 
right or wrong answer, but to balance real life relationships, to balance YouTube, to balance your other job, which for me is hotel for you. It's something else. Um, it's hard, man. It's hard to also be a friend, especially if you have friends that are going through, uh, difficult and tricky times, which is something that I feel like I'm, I'm dealing with a lot. Um, not, you know, it's not, I, I don't mind dealing with it, but, um, I know, you know everyone's mean. got, yeah, yeah. You know, if a friend is going through a, a rough patch, you, you want to help as much as you can. And of course there's only so much you can do, but like, it's, it's just tough, man. There's no, um, correct answers to life. There's no way to predict how life is going to play out. And, uh, it's it's scary when you are even not at the level of, you know, what people consider a public figure. But if you have a thousand subs, you're a public figure, at least in, in my eyes, in my definition yeah. of the term public figure. So it's uh, it's, Especially it's really within difficult. Your niche. Yeah, absolutely. Within the Yu-Gi-Oh niche for both of us. Absolutely. Uh, and it's it's really tough and it definitely has its its downsides. Absolutely. Yeah, I really I mean, I feel like the downsides never really uh outweigh all the upside though i mean i really no, never for me yeah, yeah never for me i mean i really enjoy it i enjoy the entire experience and on that same level of like anxiousness and even like doubt for yourself because honestly you know the the way youtube treats you versus like the comments you receive like there's no real way I, or at least a year ago there was no real way for me to interpret that it's like youtube will recommend a video and send it out and people are watching it and clicking it and liking it but the comments are telling you that they hate the video so it's like yeah. hmm so what so what's going on here like why is it getting views and subs but everyone says they hate it but then you make a different video and everyone says they love it but youtube's like nah we can't show this to nobody and then they, they like bury it and then you don't get any views and then you're like well what and then it's like well what am i doing wrong like and i think that's what i really was dealing with because i just kind of felt like i couldn't hit anything like i couldn't get anything to do right like i just i just couldn't figure it out and I, and, I, and it got to the point where you know um all my conventional methods of study and learning for anything else like you know like i have like a I'm like a corporate job like i do like hr stuff so like if i approached the problem in the corporate world i mean i would do some research i'd figure out the process and then i would make an action plan and follow through on it but with youtube you can do all that stuff and make a plan and follow through and you know have expected results but the results may vary because youtube might say oh we tried a new experiment we we went ahead and randomly removed all your thumbnails well shit <laughs> i just was learning photoshop and all this stuff so i could put more effort into making thumbnails because according to every youtube guru thumbnails is what i need to be successful so the week i figure it out you guys start randomly removing thumbnails and you picked my channel. It's like, yeah. wh why? Yeah. It's like, yeah, like YouTube. that kind of stuff really messed with my head. Yeah, no, I got, I got it, man. It's, uh, it's tough. It's stressful. Life is stressful enough. And, and, you know, YouTube does add a lot of positives, but it's also a lot of negatives that come with it. You never know how much money there's no set income, like a typical job. Some months you can make enough where you're like, wow. You know, if I made this every single month, I would be able to do YouTube full time. And then there's other months where you make a certain amount and you're like, wow, if I make this every single month, I'm going to literally be living on the streets. That's how little yeah. I made this month. And like, <laughs> you know, just look at December versus January for any content creator. It's oh, like yeah. that where you're like, wow, if oh, I yeah. replicated this every month, dude, I could do YouTube full time. And then you see what you make in January and you're like, yeah, this is why YouTube full time is, is really a crack pipe dream. And yeah. while it's great to do on the side, you really do need some sort of part time job. The other thing is YouTube does not take care of any sort of health insurance at all. And oh, that's a true. huge expense, especially if you want to have a family and start a family even outside of yourself and you want to put people under your health insurance plan. You know, health insurance is such a nightmare here in the United States. And like, yeah, that's a huge issue as well. YouTube doesn't pay you at all for that yeah youtube does i mean honestly <laughs> youtube i mean it is a um like I, I like the weird thing about youtube is you know it's pretty much just has a bunch of people working for free 
which yeah. I think is yeah. is insane. Like it's like not too many companies can get away with the shenanigans that like YouTube pulls yeah. off the same yeah. way like an airport, you know, can pull off shenanigans. For example, like when I was trying to come home from that event, um, they were like, yeah, so the plane that you were going to take has been grounded um due to weather or whatnot and you know your flight's canceled you know you can't get back for like a day and if i didn't look like i was like about to like literally lose my everything like if i didn't look like i was like about to literally lose my constitution at any moment i don't think that woman would have helped me but what i think is odd is like so why is delta grounded but United is flying out at the same time. <laughs> like right. it doesn't make sense. Like you know what I well, mean? I, yeah, those those major corporations, especially airlines, really can do whatever the hell they want, and they use cookies to track airline tickets. So if you search, oh, you know what? I want to go to Orlando next week. You search tickets, you don't buy them. You look a day later, the tickets have gone up by seventy dollars. Like that's a <laughs> they do that. That they admit to that. They, that's what they. That's what they use cookies for, but look it up if you don't believe me. And that was something that when I was in my marketing classes in, in college, we would always base studies around that. So, That's yeah, insane. they get away with that. I mean, companies get away with so much crappy things, and it really is a, a dog-eat-dog world out there, especially when you look at the, the big corporations of, uh, of the world. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, well, I mean, all these big corporations – all these millions and billions of dollars floating around and I still don't got a holographic dual dual disc. I don't have solid vision. I'm wondering what's going on here. Like all this money, all this tax dodging and I still don't have solid vision. What's happening? (laughs) Somebody needs to get on this technology tip and start to innovate immediately. I kind of wish Elon Musk was a dualist, honestly. That would yeah, be interesting. <laughs> that's 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 another thing though about just going back to YouTube. You know, when when you have a job, they take money out for social security, for Medicare, for whatever else they're taking money out for. With YouTube, they don't do that. So when April yeah. comes around, you get smacked in the face by the IRS and they're like, "Yeah, you owe us $2,000 today." Yeah, you owe us $3,000 today. So if you do YouTube and you're not great at – luckily, I'm very frugal with money and I'm I'm very good at spending money in a mature way. But I know mm-hmm. some people that are not good with money at all. If you do YouTube and you're not good with money and you never have a dime in your bank account and you're making enough where you're going to owe taxes, you get slammed in April for oh, all yeah. the taxes that you all of a sudden owe. And that can really screw up a lot of people if they don't have the money um, come April. Yeah, and I think YouTube's main way of uh, making sure that, you know, they keep their YouTubers out of jail and to make sure that they can kind of alleviate that problem is just go ahead and make sure YouTube doesn't pay shit. So you ain't got to worry yeah, about right. it if you don't well, make any true. money. <laughs> Most people, I mean, like last year, I don't know about this year, last year I just made the threshold to where I would owe something. But, yeah, most people don't even make that threshold. They don't even need to worry about it. Yeah. Or most people can't even get monetized, which is like, well, you know, that, it which is even They made it more difficult since me and you started. Absolutely. Oh, you know? yeah. I mean, I got a second monetized channel, which is cool. Like at first I thought I was going to just use the second channel to like only do live streams or something and then just upload on my original channel. But I just went away from that after that channel got monetized because the the interesting thing was, <laughs> as I had these two different monetized channels, the CPMs were different on both channels, which I thought was ridiculous because it's like, why would the CPM be different on one channel versus the other? And they're both under the same name, same account. But I guess, you know, different branding, YT Dan versus whatever the other channel could be, could have been like, you know, cooking up fish daily. And, you know, it's just not the same thing. So I see why the CPM could potentially be different. But then once I start like messing around with both, I'm like, this is actually just creating more work and I have to work harder to make sure that the people on my main channel sees this other content. I was like, ah, forget it. I'll just put it all on my channel. (laughs) And I just went back to it. It's just, uh, you know, it's, it's, and that goes back to that whole weird, um, Thing about just not understanding what's going on with like YouTube, but they've been better with like explaining things. And honestly, that new t- the new tools that they released, those new reporting tools, are really helpful. 
Uh, well, they're really helpful to like me or someone like me who's like used to looking at that kind of data for like other things. So I was like, when I'm looking at this data, I'm like, oh, okay, I see where I went wrong or I see why people like this or I see why people watch this. Like my Gladiator Beast video, it was very popular according to YouTube's little message thing. It's like, oh, this is very popular. But I know why that was popular because Gladiator Beast just dropped. Everybody's looking for an alternative outside of um neos and right. i'm using a card that on youtube literally no one has ever made a video on except for me and this other guy eight years ago was previewing the card in a magazine uh with his like shitty cell phone camera from eight years ago <laughs> like it was yeah, just, yeah, it was yeah like so outside of that like he's the only other person with it like a phoenix beast garuda in the title so when I put that out there, YouTube's like, oh, this is brand new content. This has never been seen before on YouTube before. Let's go ahead and share it out. And then people was like, oh, snap, Dan, upload it. Those people normally watch. And then someone else looked, oh, snap, something new about Gladiator Beast. And those people watched. And then some randos that it was suggested to looked and was like, oh, snap, Gladiator Beast. And what is that card? Click just to find out what it was. And, and I honestly, I think that's probably why I got more views than anything else because of timing and everything else. And the thumbnail was intriguing. Now I upload my next video, you know, Luigi's uh, lasagna adventure, Mamma Mia Paparoni. I'm not going to get any views on that. Like, so right, I don't know. Right, of course, of course. <laughs> So I don't, I don't know. Like, it's just, you know, it's just, it's just a weird thing, but I I did learn from the entire experience and, you know, and it was definitely other stuff happening with YouTube. Like YouTube wasn't the full reason why I was just going to say I'm done with YouTube. YouTube was a big factor, but everything else with my life just was not syncing up with YouTube and YouTube stopped being an escape. Like like Yu-Gi-Oh has always been my escape from the world. Like the world could be on fire, but if I can just get a couple cards and I can take a look at them and build a deck or I can shuffle them up or something that gives me a uh, peace. Like that solitude really helps me. And, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh has always been like that for me. So YouTube became this thing with Yu-Gi-Oh and YouTube and, uh, you like YouTube was causing a lot of stress and putting stress on my favorite thing in the world. And it was making it like YouTube was making Yu-Gi-Oh not fun. And I thought that that was such a strange thing because I've played through like oppressive metas. I've played with shitty people, you know, I've had really negative experiences and I continue to play, but when YouTube was mixed with Yu-Gi-Oh, I almost wanted to stop playing. Right. And I thought that that was very weird. And I, and that, and that caused me to kind of pause and take a step back and really figure out like, is this YouTube thing I'm doing even really healthy? Like, you know, it's really, it's, it's starting to go into other aspects of my life and affect it in a negative way. So I really need to evaluate this. And after I gave it a lot of thought and I really figured it out, I I just, you know, I got over that hump. But it, it's, it's crazy. It's just crazy how it can just quickly consume you. Like, like it's uh it's like anything like, you know, once you get a uh, routine or a, uh, or a, or, a, or a rhythm going, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to stop. It's easier to keep going, if that makes sense. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. So so it's just it was it was really weird. And one day I just woke up and it was just like, something's not right. Like, I just, I just knew it. Just like, something's not right. Like, I don't know what it is, but it's not right. And that was just one of my things because I would just, man, I was just, it's, I can't even tell you how many times I had a rough spot in my life and I just went to the car shop and dueled all day and gained some perspective through a duel about my situation. Like, it's been very weird. Like, it's been very yeah. weird. Like, like if, like for example, one of my f most favorite decks to play with a deck, you know, Law to Normal, um, with uh, Gigabyte level one monster. So it's like, you know, he's the, I guess the baby form that eventually evolves in the uh, Gigi Gajigo and Go Go Gigi Gajigo and the other one. 
<laughs> but yeah. um but pretty much like when i used to play that deck and i used to win with my law to normal triangle power combo i used to really be like man like just like this deck can overcome every meta you know i can persevere and overcome as well like because it didn't matter what the deck was it could win if you got the combo off and I would just focus in on the combo, focus in on completing the combo and ignore what my opponent was doing completely and just try to get this combo off. And sometimes in life, you know, I've realized that I need to get focused and to eliminate all distractions and I need to get this combo off. I need to apply for this job. I need to get this girlfriend. I need to get this car. I need to do whatever it is I need to do. So I need to focus on my combo. What's the combo? I need to work this 40 hour job every day and and grin and bear until I get enough money so I can afford a car so I can drive away from my neighborhood to get a better job like that kind of stuff. But yeah, absolutely, man. But it's like, you know, I don't know. It's, it's something about something about a duel that kind of just takes me personally just outside of myself and i can just see it for what it is and fully immerse myself in it and just i don't know just just fully just enjoy it and just become one with just like the game and just really i don't know just really get into a trance about the actual duel but like the crazy thing is like when i'm doing that on stream it's hard to do that because i'm trying to duel read the chat you know actually play well you know <laughs> you know keep up with the donations everything else is going on it's a lot of yeah, distractions of but a lot of, of times course. like how you sat and played um uh bloodborne i i was sit and play Oh. like i sat like one time i sat down like all right and i gotta limit myself like especially now because duel links right now like I, I know you i don't know do you play duel links I I used to a very long time ago when it first came out. I need to get back into it, so I haven't played okay. it recently. But uh, I was gonna say like back then, uh, like Duel Links like used to be real slow, um, and just like unga bunga Yu Gi Oh. But now Duel Links is like like really fast. You know the the games can get really intense and really get close, and you can even have them crazy anime duels. So I'll sit down and like. I'm going to record and I need to record and get off of this thing in 10 minutes. Because if I don't, I will sit and duel for hours and just not right. get up and just keep right. playing and keep changing the deck and keep looking for new combos and change to play something else or copy some randos deck and play his deck for a little while and all kinds of stuff. Like I'll just do it for hours and then get up and be like, oh, no. It's 9.30 p.m. <laughs> like, the day is gone now. Like, how did this even happen? But, oh, yeah, man. I Actually, I have not been able to do that since uh, wife has been pregnant, actually. But, you know, it, the things we do. <laughs> the things we do the for love. The things we do for love, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, man. Oh man, I don't, I, I don't really, uh, I mean, I don't really know how we should end these things, but man, I, I've had so much fun like talking with you, man, over this, like, what is this? Like, oh, like over an hour and a half, almost hour. Yeah, close to minutes. two hours, dude. This was a, uh, this is a really, really fun time. Oh uh, yes, man. Uh, I don't know. Uh, what, uh, like, what kind of stuff you got going on in the future? Like, what, like, what should we expect to see from Dylan? What should we expect to see from Dylan? You give everything. Well, if anyone is interested at all in watching Sevens, definitely check my channel because I'll give you all the Sevens coverage you need and more. Nice. Uh, more coverage than anyone could ask for. And when Sevens begins, myself and my friends uh, Nick and Nick, both Nicks, <laughs> and, um, my girlfriend Kate, we will all be doing the weekly talk in Yu-Gi-Oh's where we go in-depth about every single Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens episode. That'll be on a weekly basis. So uh, a lot more live streams, obviously, when that show starts. I have a Seto Kaiba-related theory in early March, and I have my updated timeline theory that's been three years in the making, which will be oh. out at the end of March before sevens begin. So those are the two big videos to be expecting from my channel. Uh, I've been uploading more frequently lately. So if you're into anime stuff, if you're into any sort of anime news in regards to Yu-Gi-Oh theories, top tens, whatever it may be, definitely check out my channel. I really do appreciate it. And Dan, thank you so much for having me on. I had an absolute blast. Hey, thank you so much. And, uh, 
Ah uh, man, I'm glad. I'm glad we actually got to meet at that event. It was so crazy. Oh, me too, you, dude. Man. Me too. It's it, great. You're you're a great guy in person. It was oh, awesome. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> funny because I I had never I had never seen you before, which is so strange. And now I feel like I see you all the time because when that live stream popped up and I saw you there. I was like, I f it's so weird because I felt like the entire time I watched your channel, I felt like you had never showed your face. Like, I felt like I've never seen it. And then, like, to see you at that event, I was like, oh, snap. That's Dylan of Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything. Yep, the man, yep, right me. here. It was just I know, insane. I know. It was great, dude. It was amazing. Yeah, it's it was just it was just so cool, man. It was so it was so cool. And I think I think you came a little bit later. Yeah, you yeah, you came a little bit later and I was there like uh like I guess right when it had gotten started. So I'm just kind of watching people walk into the room and it was really funny because a lot of folks were walking in the room and I had no idea who the hell they were cuz they were coming right. from all different types of communities. But as soon as you spoke, I knew who you were. <laughs> that's <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh God, that's Dylan. I guess that's a everything. good thing, right? That's not a bad thing. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's definitely a good thing. I mean, you know, I think a lot of, I think the people who do content without a camera, I think are have like a, a really good advantage because a lot of times, like even when you don't feel like uh getting fully ready for a video you can kind of wing it you know in your pajamas <laughs> oh yeah i i love it dude i mean the amount of half asleep no shower pajama <laughs> videos i've recorded yeah it's the best like I, I really don't bust out that camera and i'm on camera enough where you know for the live streams where i don't think i lose that personal touch with my audience but um yeah man being able to record videos not using the camera there's less editing involved it's great i love it Oh yes, well, man, I I loved having you on the channel. Uh, on next time, I don't know, maybe we should we should do. I know we should do something outside of the podcast. I don't know what we would do, but I have, but you know, I don't know. We should do something outside of the podcast. Oh yeah, we were talking on the on the phone the other day. Yeah, that's secret plans. Yeah, you guys yeah, don't know about that. Yeah, that secret plan. <laughs> and, you know, if you ever if you ever make your way down to New Jersey. You could absolutely come on a stream with the crew down in the basement and we could do a live stream hey. together with everyone just talking about life, talking about Yu-Gi-Oh. That would be a lot of fun as well. Oh, love yeah. On. People would love that. I would, I would oh, definitely yeah. love that. Man, you know what? The crazy thing is I haven't been in a friend's basement playing Yu-Gi-Oh in like fucking 10 years. Wow. That's, dude, that's a disgrace. That's insane. That's yeah. crazy. I've been bouncing around since I got married, which is like nuts. Like after like after I first got married, you know, I had like career and stuff and I just kind of only played Yu-Gi-Oh uh on the that that one automated app, uh the U, the Yu -Oh YGO Pro. Yeah, yeah, the YGO Pro. I used to play that like on my phone for a really long time, but then I got a new phone and I got so busy I never re-downloaded it because they made some sort of change and I had to take like two or three extra steps to download it. I just couldn't be bothered. And then <laughs> eventually I ended up moving to Seattle and then I moved from Seattle uh to New York, from Detroit to Seattle then from Seattle to New York. And like, I don't have any friends to go over to their house and chill in the basement in New York City, which sucks. And I was thinking about like, man, I really do want that back in my life. I really do want that circle of friends who play Yu-Gi-Oh and respect the game and just want to chill on a Friday night and play Yu-Gi-Oh all night. Like, I, I miss that. Like, I really do. Yeah, no, I mean, hey, I'm very blessed at my parents' house where I've been living and I continue to just save money. I've, I'm very lucky to have a good relationship with them. I'm not in a rush to move out at all. Uh, Jersey and New York is so freaking expensive, dude. Um, yeah, so I'm very can... thankful for them and for that. Uh, hey, but hey, you are good. always in. That's why almost all the hangouts are usually at my house with my friend group. You're always I know it's like a four or five hour drive down for you, but you're always invited to come over. We can play some Yu-Gi-Oh and hang out in my that basement, is, man. If that you is very, feel that nostalgia. is very tempting, honestly. I, I mean, you know what? I'm probably going to take you up on that at some point. After the baby Dude, take, is born, take, take me take me up on it, man. And I can um, I I know a lot of great great people that are in the area. Um, someone like Legendary Duels is someone that comes to mind. He runs a YouTube channel and he plays the game. And uh, after the I had like 
man, I wish I knew you better before during the Jump Festa stream. I had about 20 people in my basement for the Jump Festa stream for the announcement of Sevens. Oh, um, man. Yeah, and afterwards, there were people, like, there were, like, two different Yu-Gi-Oh! games going on in this basement, and I went to bed. It was, like, 5 a.m. Dude, you would have loved it, man. Yeah, um, I would. I really would have loved it. <laughs> yeah, but, I yeah, really, let really me know Let me know when that. you want to oh come down, God. bro, and we'll, we'll make it a big party. Be right, great, well, we're, make, we're making it a party, and now everybody's going to ask for that in the comments, and they're going to want to see a video. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to make that happen, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna will. have to make my of way course, down there dude. for sure. Uh, I don't I I guess I gotta just navigate the baby situation. I'd be like so afraid to like step away. Like when I was at that event, I was so nervous. Did you did you did she have did your wife have the baby? No, she didn't yet. We we're not okay. doing until July. Oh okay. But okay. I so thought you got, you got some time. Yeah, but while I was away, you know, like I'm like I'm picking up like everything like because while she's you know pregnant it's hard for her to just do basic stuff so i'm so i'm yeah, doing all that and when i was gone i think i was only gone for like just the weekend i think it was friday saturday and sunday and i yeah and i came back sunday night um she know she was looking like man like i didn't realize how much you actually do and i said i didn't realize how worried i was gonna be like i was out enjoying myself having fun but in the back of my mind i'm thinking like oh my god like i hope she didn't slip on a banana peel or nothing stupid like that like, <laughs> all that kind of stuff was just going through my mind because it's like it's not even like like the weird thing about I don't know about your spouse or anybody being pregnant and you care about them and you are the person that they're uh, leaning on for support. It's like, it's not the big stuff that you can avoid that, that hurts them. Like, you know, like for example, like a car accident or something like that would definitely hurt them, but a car accident isn't likely, but that stray sock that you were carrying up the laundry and you dropped the sock that stray sock, someone slipping on that could be like detrimental. So it's like, it's the oh, little yeah. stuff, which is just so, it's so insane. So I was just super worried while I was there, but I was having a good time, but I was super worried. <laughs> like, so yeah. I don't know. Well, I hope, yeah, no, I got to do it. I hope everything with that goes well. And uh, yeah, myself and everyone in the community will be giving you a uh, big congratulations in July when it, when it happens. Hey, soon I'm I, actually, I have a very, I have a special item uh that my wife actually got me that i have not revealed yet but i will reveal it in a video coming up pretty Ooh. soon for the uh for the sex reveal of the baby and uh i've been waiting for like a special video to do it and uh we are getting a 3d ultrasound on wednesday so i was waiting for that actually so uh um, oh, wow now I'm going to use, I'm probably going to do my, my thing. I might do it for my King of Games video, this video, no real no promises, but I am definitely going to do a thing for the sex reveal. I have not told anyone, uh, the sex of the baby. Also, Dylan, while you're here, before you go, you're going to have to guess my boy. Is it boy or girl? What do you think? I, I'm going to guess girl and I'm guessing girl because I think. The percentage I'm if I remember correctly, the percentage of girl boy is not truly fifty fifty. I think okay. the the odds of having a girl are like fifty one or fifty two. I might be incorrect about that. So I'm just going with logic and I'm I'm gonna guess girl. I also think um I think if you had a daughter, you would be able to raise her as a better duelist than any girl character we've ever seen in a Yu Gi Oh <laughs> anime. And I think that would be I think that would be really cool. So <laughs> She would at least be stronger than my Valentine. At least. Yes. Bare as long as she won one duel at locals or against you, then she's stronger than my Valentine. <laughs> well, my actually got wrecked by Taya, which is like yeah. terrible. Yeah, that's right. Actually, Jesus. my introduced us to this concept of scooping, actually. I didn't yeah. actually realize that. She was yeah, the first so my, one to put her hand over the deck thing. and say, I surrender. Wow. Yeah, she's she's useful wow. for something. Now, actually, when you think about that, that's kind of problematic. The only female duelist surrender. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's, that's, that's no! not good. <laughs> no! That's not good. Oh, God. Here we no. go again. Yep. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I just... <laughs> that's going to be on Watch Mojo. Oof. Like yeah, watch top Mojo. ten problematic Yu Gi Oh episodes. Oh, I, I wouldn't surprise me. Watch Mo, Watch Mojo will do anything for a quick click. <laughs> oh my god! Wow, that could be a 
That could be a funny YouTube slogan. He'd be like, welcome to the YT Dan channel. I'll do anything for a quick click. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's I think it's getting a little late here. I think that I think it's time to end it up for that one. <laughs> yeah, it is. I'm so done because it is time and I gotta get to bed, man. Thanks, man. Dude, I appreciate I appreciate no, you no hanging problem. out Thank man, you, man. so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm gonna take you up on that invite for sure. Yeah, come down, dude. See, it'll be a fun time. All right, man. Well, I th- thanks so much, and uh, keep it dank. <laughs>